I want to make it clear that this video was solely focused on the cultivation techniques for medical plants during their vegetative and flowering stages. The channel does not promote or instruct on the use or creation of illegal drugs. It's important to note that while these medicinal plants are legal in many states throughout the US, it may not be legal in your country or state. I do not recommend, approve, or suggest that you break any local laws. With that being said, these cultivation techniques can be used in all plants, including vegetables. And finally, I'd like to add that if you disagree with this topic or are offended, do not watch any further. Hey, what's up? My name's Hank, AKA Cali Green. So this channel is one of the original content creators for cannabis cultivation. I started back in 2012 when there really wasn't many guys doing this. Yeah, man, I practically invented the seed the harvest style. I just want to say thank you for those who've been following me know who I am. And if you don't know, you have just tuned in to a Cali Green Grow video. If you're a first time grower, have never grown before, or just like watching grow videos, click subscribe, hit the notify bell, and grow along with me. So one of the earliest recorded uses of cannabis was in ancient China. The Chinese used cannabis for medicinal purposes as early as 4000 BC. It was used to treat all sorts of sicknesses, including malaria, constipation, and rheumatism. The ancient Chinese also used cannabis seeds as a source of food and oil, and used the fibers to make rope. The ancient Egyptians also used cannabis for medicinal purposes. The Ebris Papyrus is a medical text from around 1500 BC. It mentions cannabis as a treatment for inflammation and glaucoma. The Egyptians also used cannabis as a painkiller during childbirth. In India, cannabis has been used for thousands of years as part of the religious practice of Hinduism. The plant is believed to be a gift from the god Shiva, and it's also used to worship her. And some depictions of Shiva even show her holding a leaf. The Greeks and Romans also used cannabis for medicinal purposes. The Greek physician Dio Saccharides wrote about cannabis in his medical text, the Materia Medica. I'll leave a text in the description. This text was written in the first century AD. He describes cannabis as a treatment for earache and inflammation. The Roman physician Galen also wrote about cannabis, describing it as a treatment for pain and inflammation. Spanish colonizers brought cannabis to the Americas. Native American cultures were among the first to use cannabis in the Americas. The plant was used in spiritual ceremonies, and its use was believed to connect individuals to spiritual worlds. The Aztecs used cannabis for medicinal purposes. They used it to alleviate pain and treat swelling, and they also believed it can be used to treat other ailments, such as fever and seizures. In the mid-1800s, cannabis was commonly used in medicines to treat range of ailments like pain, nausea, and insomnia. Pancho Villa is a prominent figure in American history. He's known for his role in the Mexican Revolution and his use of cannabis. There's even pictures of him smoking a joint. And right about here is where it takes a dark turn. You see, by the early 1900s, cannabis had been associated with Mexican immigrants and African Americans and racist propaganda fueled the criminalization of the plant. In the early 20s, states began to criminalize the possession of cannabis, and by 1930s, the federal government had passed the Marijuana Tax Act, and this made cannabis illegal at the federal level. The law was mostly driven by negative attitudes towards Mexican immigrants and African Americans, who were falsely accused of using cannabis to commit violent crimes and corrupting white youth. Pause for a second, because this shit's getting deep. It's all positivity over here. This is the past and we can't ignore it, but we can't dwell in it either. I think it's important that people come together around this plant and we shun negativity and people that try to bring us apart. I'm letting you guys know right now, I'm not allowing any negative comments on this video. But let's fast forward to the 1950s and talk about a group of young people called the Beats or the Beat Generation. The Beat Movement was led by Jack Kerouac Allen Ginsberg and a few others. The Beat Generation was a cultural and literary movement that emerged in the 1950s. It was primarily characterized by the rejection of mainstream values 
experimentation with drugs and focus on individual freedoms and spiritual exploration. The movement was strongly influenced by a style of black music called bebop. African American jazz musicians of the time were known to use cannabis to help spark creativity. The beat generation were the main influencers of hippie culture. The hippie movement of the 1960s and 70s was a counterculture movement that arose in response to the social political norms of the time. It was a movement that rejected mainstream values and embraced alternative lifestyles including the use of cannabis. And cannabis was a key part of the hippie culture. The plant was seen as a way to connect with nature and explore altered state of consciousness and also to reject the values of mainstream society. Cannabis use was also seen as a form of political protest. And the hippies of the 70s have had the most influence and should be credited for all the modern strains that we see today. You see, during those times, cannabis was mostly imported. It came from places like Mexico, Colombia, Thailand, and all the strains that were smoking back then were land races. Strains like Acapulco Gold, Colombian Gold, Panama Red, Afghan, Thai Stick, and even Maui Waui from Hawaii. But there was a special group of communal hippies that were living in Northern California that were growing their own herb. And these guys started crossing these original land races. One of the first hybrids ever created was skunk. And this is a cross between Colombian, Afghan, and Mexican strains. But it didn't stop there. That was just the beginning. Unfortunately, the history is a little muddy. You see, cannabis was illegal back then. So nobody was really claiming stuff. I found stories about DJ Short, and also the Sacred Seed Collective. But there's no way of verifying this. So the history that follows is a mix of popular legends and historical facts. The person credited for creating Skunk One is Sam Skunkman. Skunk quickly became a popular strain amongst enthusiasts and was widely used for breeding other hybrids. In the 1980s, home breeders began to focus more on creating hybrids with specific characteristics. One of the most influential strains of this era was Northern Lights. This was possibly a cross between Afghan and Thai land races, but we'll never really know. It was known for flowering fast, being super frosty and potent. The exact origin where this strain was created is unclear, but some sources I found point to the Pacific Northwest, possibly Seattle. Northern Lights became a staple amongst connoisseurs, and it was used extensively for breeding new hybrids. In the 90s, Hybrids were being developed at a rapid pace. During this time, the cannabis culture was heavily influenced by hip hop, and this had a significant impact on the creation of new strains. Rap artists like Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, and Cypress Hill helped popularize cannabis culture and introduce the world to strains like OG, Indo, and Chronic. The OG strain legend tells how the strain originated in Southern California in the early to mid 90s. But the origin story branches are many, so I'm only gonna talk about the two most popular. Some people believe that OG is an acronym for Ocean Grown. And this story tells of a rich dude living near the ocean in Southern California, possibly Malibu, that didn't really have a name for the strain he created. But since he lives by the ocean, they decided to call it Ocean Grown. The other story tells us of an original, an OG, Afghan strain from the 70s that was circulating around LA during the 90s. And honestly, there's no way of verifying any of these stories, no matter whose friends, cousins, moms, husband you heard it from. What we do know for a fact is that OG quickly became popular in the LA and San Fernando Valley. In 1996, California legalized cannabis for medical use. This was followed by many other states until eventually in 2012, Colorado and Washington legalized cannabis for recreational use. By 2016, 10 states had legalized recreational use and 29 more for medical use. This sparked a wave of innovation in breeding. Breeders were now able to experiment more freely with different strains and develop new hybrids. 
and this has led to a rapid creation of new strains. And land races are practically non-existent anymore. As a matter of fact, most of the strains on the market, or nearly all the strains on the market, are hybrids of hybrids. With big corporate involved now, I'm not really sure what the future looks like. It could be dark, man. Gene editing, synthetic biology, that's all possible. But you know what? Hobbyists like you and I can play an important part in the creation of new hybrids and the preservation of existing legacy strains. My name's Hank, aka Cali Green, and I want to thank you for watching, commenting, and subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Don't forget to check out the links in the description section of this video. Follow me on Instagram. Check out my Patreon. Check out my website. And if you like this video, click like. Peace.